Today we're going to start Chapter 1, Lesson 1, Rational Numbers. You will need to have some materials with you before beginning this session. You should have a pencil, a highlighter, or an ink pen or something that you can use to highlight some things in your text, and you also need your textbook. If you don't have your textbook, remember that you can go online with your username and password and you can use that textbook. Also, you may need some extra paper, so get a few sheets of paper with you in case we need to show some work there. Remember that I will be checking to see that you completed your notes by looking at what's in your textbook, what we write in your textbook, as well as anything that we write on paper. So if I'm writing on paper, you should be writing on paper. If I'm writing in your book, you should be writing in your book. So let's get started. First of all, this lesson may be a little bit longer just because this is the first time we've used our new book. And if you are on the online text, anytime you see um, these icons, such as the one that says vocabulary ABC, you can click on that and it will help you with your vocabulary words. As we go through, I'll point out some other icons that you can use uh, to help you throughout your lesson. So the first thing we want to do is just look at our essential question. Why is it helpful to write numbers in different ways? And remember, there are several different ways to write numbers. We can write them as fractions, percents, decimals, many different ways. And we're going to be looking at the fraction, percent, and decimal in this particular section. Down at the bottom it says, during a recent regular season. Now, Remember, you need your book. You may not be able to see what's on mine. Depends if I get it zoomed in well enough for you. During a recent regular season, a Texas Ranger baseball player had 126 hits and was at bat 399 times. Write a fraction in simplest form to represent the ratio of the number of hits to the number of at-bats. Okay, so we have number of hits, number of, number of at-bats. So the first thing we'll do is write it as our numerator, our number of hits, and as our at-bats, our at-bats as the denominator. So we have 126 over 399. If you were to simplify that, and you should know how to simplify fractions at this point, if not, you may need to go back to my summer videos to review. Once you simplify, you would get 6 over 19. So remember, this first page is going to be important for you because it's going to tell you, first of all, what we're going to be doing in this lesson. Second, it's going to give you some important vocabulary words, and those are, for this particular section, rational numbers, repeating decimal, terminating decimal. It's also going to tell you which standards we're going to be looking at, and that's also going to be very important to us as we are going to be learning eight NS1 as our standard, and we'll talk about that standard um, in class. So let's turn the page. When we turn the page, we see our key concept at the top is rational numbers. You have been working with rational numbers since you started school and probably before that. A rational number is a number that can be written as the ratio of two integers in which the denominator is not zero. Sounds difficult, but all it's actually saying is that any number that can be written as a fraction where the denominator, remember that's the number on the bottom, is not zero. We also have a little diagram here to show us rational numbers. Rational numbers are going to include your whole numbers, your integers, and your natural numbers. And we'll talk more about those um, in the next few days. So every rational number can be expressed as a decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator. This is something that you should have done in your previous math classes. The decimal form of a rational number is called a repeating decimal. If the repeating digit is zero, then the decimal is a terminating decimal. And we give some examples over here. So one half, if I divide the numerator by the denominator, one divided by two, I get 0 0.5, 0, 0, 0, 0. Since the repeating number is a 0, this is a terminating decimal, 0 0.5. 2 fifths, or 2 over 5. 2 divided by 5 is going to be 0 0.4, 0, 0, 0. Terminating decimal, 0 0.4. 5 sixths, or 5 over 6. 5 divided by 6 is 0 0.833333. Terminating decimal, 
it does not terminate. It is a repeating decimal. And so we could show that repeating decimal using a bar notation. If you look over to the left in your book, it talks about bar notation. We could show it by putting a bar over the three because that is the number that repeats. So let's look down at the examples. This says to write each fraction or mixed number as a decimal. If you notice up here, there's a little icon that says Tutor. If you need extra examples than the ones I'm giving you, if you click on this on your book online, it will give you some more examples by teachers showing you how to change fractions and mixed numbers to decimals. So we give an example of 5 eighths. 5 eighths means 5 divided by 8. We talked about the fact that the fraction bar is a division. And then we show our division and we get 0 0.625. For a mixed number, we have negative 1 and 2 thirds. We need to change negative 1 and 2 thirds to an improper fraction. Remember to do that, we take the denominator times the integer plus the numerator. So 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5, but the whole thing is negative. So negative 5 over 3. And then we divide 5 divided by 3 and we get 1.6, remember it's negative, and because the 6 is going to repeat, we're going to use the bar notation to show that. So let's take a look down at the bottom to do these problems. We'll do A and C together, and we're going to need some paper for this, so just get your paper out, and we'll do problem A. Problem A is 3 fourths. And we should know that the decimal for 3 fourths is 0 0.75, but in case we don't, we need to show our work. So this means 3 divided by 4. When you divide, the numerator goes inside, the denominator goes outside. We know that 4 goes into 3 0 times. So we need to add a 0 and put our decimal. 4 goes into 30 7 times. 7 times 4 is 28. We'll need to have another 0 to bring down. 4 goes into 25 times. 5 times 4 is 20. Remainder is 0. So we know that our percent for 3 fourths is 0 0.75. Let's do C. For C, we have 4 and 13 over 25. Now the first thing we need to do is change that from a mixed number to an improper fraction. To change that to an improper fraction we need to take 25 times 4 which we know is 100 and add 13. So we get 113 over 25. We know that means 113 divided by 25 so we'll put 113 inside the box, 25 outside the box. Because this is a mixed number and we have a whole number here, we know that we're going to have a decimal that's going to be bigger than 1. So 25 goes into 113, we know, 4 times. That's 100. That leaves 13. We need to add a 0, pull that down. 25 goes into 130 five times, 125. We need another zero. 130 minus 125 is five. Pull our zero down. 25 goes into 52 times. So our decimal for four and 13 over 25 is 4.52. And we knew that this number was going to be four because our whole number in our mixed number was 4. Let's go back to our book and put the answers for A and C in our book. So the answer to A is 0 0.75 and the answer to C we said is 4.52. Take a few minutes and work problems B and D on the sheet of paper we were just using and put your answers in the book for B and D.
pause the video, do your work, and then come back to finish. Now that you're finished with problems B and D and you hopefully have your answer in the book, you're going to bring those with you to class tomorrow and we'll go through them to make sure you got the correct answer. One thing I forgot to tell you to do was at the top of your notes, we need to always put what lesson we're working on, so lesson one, and let's put the date 9214 over to the side. All right, let's move on. In your book on page nine, there's an example at the top that shows a word problem. It says, in a recent season, St. Louis Cardinals first baseman Albert Pujols, and we know that's old because that's no longer the case, had 175 hits in 538 bats. To the nearest thousandth, find his batting average. Now here they are using a calculator to put this in because the number is quite large. And when we do quite large numbers like this, I would probably allow a calculator as well. So they put in 175 divided by 530, enter, and they got this long decimal. But we have been uh, requested to do it to the nearest thousandth. Remember that thousandth is going to be, uh, this one is the tenths, this one is the hundredths, this one is the thousandths. So we're going to look at this zero and we're going to look at the number next to it. The number is a one, so the zero is going to remain. If it were five or over, we would have rounded up. So the batting average was 0 0.330. Okay, I want you to take a minute, pause the video, and I want you to work on problem E. Problem E says, in a recent season, NASCAR driver Jimmy Johnson won six of the 36 total races held. To the nearest thousandth, find the part of races he won. So we're looking at thousandths, remember. And I don't want you to use a calculator. This one is fairly simple, six divided by 36. So remember, we'll write it as this. And then, uh, if you would like, you can show your work right over here. So we have 6 divided by 36. That means we're going to take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. And I'll let you pause the video from here. You work the problem out, put your answer for E here in their book, and then come back so we can finish. Now that you've finished example E, let's take a look at numbers 4 and 5 down at the bottom on page 9. This time we're going to write decimals as fractions, so we're just going to go the opposite of what we did. These, I think, are a little bit more, um, are less difficult because you don't have to do so much division. So let's look at number four. Write 0 0.45 as a fraction. 0 0.45 equals 45 over 100. When we... Okay. We had a little bit of a problem with the microphone, so I'm not sure where we were. So I'm going to go back and let's look at number four again, 0 0.45 as a fraction, or 45 hundredths if we say it properly. We're going to divide 45 by 100. Because it's in the hundredths place, we would put it over 100 and then simplify to 9 over 20. Before we move to number five, let's just look at an example ourselves over here to the side. So if I had 0.3, this is 3 tenths because it's in the tenths place, so I would just write it 3 over 10, and it's simplified, so I don't need to do any further simplification. Let's look at number 5. 5 is a little bit more confusing for some students. 0 0.5 repeating cannot be written as 5 over 10 because 0 0.5 repeating is different than 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is going to have zeros after it. 0 0.5 repeating is the same as 0 0.555, so we know that it, it keeps repeating as a 5. So we cannot write it as 5 over 10. So we have a little formula that we use in order to do it. So we're going to assign a variable to the value 0 0.5 repeating, or 5 tenths repeating. Let n equal 0 0.555, then perform operations on n to de determine its fractional value. So what we do is because it was in the tenths place, we multiply both sides by 10. So we get 10n equals 5.5555, and then we subtract our n. Sounds difficult, but if you follow this, it's going to be fairly simple. We get 9n equals 5, and we divide both sides by 9. And they didn't really show that for you, but I'll show it to you, just like we would if we were solving an equation. We get n equals 5 ninths. So the decimal 0 0.5 repeating can be written as 5 ninths. Let's look at 0 0.4 repeating. 
I would have n equals 0 0.444, and then I'm going to put dots because it continues to repeat, and then I'm going to multiply 10 times n and 10 times 0 0.444 repeating. So I get 10n on this side, and I'm using a capital because I'm kind of using a formula and not just an equation like we have been. Anytime you multiply a decimal by 10, it's going to move your decimal point over once. So we're going to have 4.4444 repeating. Then we're going to subtract our n. When you do that, all of these are going to cancel out. And so we get 10n equals 4. Whoops, sorry. 9n, I'm a little bit asleep. 9n equals 4 because 10n minus 1n is 9n. We'll divide both sides by 9, and we get n equals 4 ninths. Do you see a pattern? 0 0.5 repeating is 5 ninths. 0 0.4 repeating is 4 ninths. What do you think 0 0.2 repeating is? Think about that. Let's discuss it in class tomorrow. Or 0 0.1 repeating. What do you think it would be as a fraction? All right, let's go to the last page in your book that we're going to go through together. This time we're writing um, 2.18 repeating as a mixed number in simplest form. Because this is in the hundredths place, we're going to multiply both sides by 100 and then do the exact same thing we did before, only because we have the 2 out here, we're going to have a mixed number instead of a fraction. So let's take a look at um, F and G together. Okay, so up here on the side of your book, we'll use it instead of your paper. We'll look at f. We get negative 0.14. To change that to a fraction, it's in negative 14 hundredths. It's in the hundredths place. We're going to put that over 100, and then we're going to simplify. If you simplify that, you're going to divide everything by 2, and you should end up with negative 7 over 50. So we'll put that down here on the line, negative 7 over 50. The next one, G, is a little bit more difficult, but we'll do it together. 0 0.27 repeating. So we need N equals, if you look over here you can see how we're going to do it, n equals 0 0.272727 and that's repeating because it's in the hundredths place we're going to multiply it by 100 both sides so we have 100n equals 27.2727 we're going to subtract n, which was 0 0.2727. These cancel. 99n equals 27. We'll divide both sides by 99. And 27 uh, divided by 99 is going to simplify to 3 over 11. So a little bit different pattern than the one over here because we didn't have a whole number, we just had hundredths, and a little different pattern than the one we did on the previous page. I want you to take some time and I want you to complete problems one through seven down at the bottom of the page, and then I want you to rate yourself on how you um, understand how to write a repeating decimal as a fraction, either not very well, oh, kind of, or really well, and then if you need the personal tutor to help you out, there is the little personal tutor section right down here. So um, go ahead and um, actually let's not do those problems. We'll do those problems online tomorrow in class. So just go ahead and finish your notes. And when you finish your notes, bring those to class with you tomorrow.